Deborah, with her 30 years of being an entrepreneur and creating over seven companies, knows exactly what it means to accept the mission. When you make that decision, when you accept the mission to become a solopreneur, to take yourself and your talents to market, then you embrace a life of not only unlimited possibilities, but also the unknown. It's an elixir of fear and bravery that only someone who's taken the leap really understands. On our show, Deb digs deep with her guests to highlight what you, the listener, wants to know. The stories, the whys, and the hows to navigate the journey to success. Get ready to hear from some of the most incredible mission takers from Generation Z to Boomers. So sit up, perk up, and get ready to be blown away. Now here is your host, Deborah Drummond. Hello, hello, my most adventurous, ever expanding, always learning audience. That's you today. That's you today. (laughs) You know, it takes a little bit of brain fuel to come up with something new. You guys know that, right? Welcome to the Mission Accepted Podcast. We are going to rock it out today because there's a woman that's gone from farm girl to health girl, and that takes a big dedication to hanging on to the mission. So we have Sonia with us today, and she's an incredible woman who I've had an opportunity to meet. And we not only had an opportunity to meet, but the beautiful thing about when you meet people and then you keep meeting people, I so recommend that. You get to know people, then you get to hang out with people. And Sonia was one of the first one of the first women to uh, go, yeah, I want to be part of this 262 project. And not only do I want to be part of it, I want to be on the main stage. She's like, I think I should go on the main stage. I'm like, I think you should go on the main stage. And I think we just came up with your title, Farm Girl to Health Girl, Farm Girl to Wealth Girl. There you go. Um, and she is going to be speaking um, before. She's going to be speaking in 2023, you guys. It's just coming up. And she's also going to be speaking on the main stage when we do our 2024 launch, which we are now just starting to announce is including a celebrity panel. Ah, I know, right? We just don't stop with the surprises. We don't stop with the surprises. So anyways, you guys, if you want a free ticket, you know what to do. You just go to devdrummond.com and you look under events and all of the events are happening and the 22 we're two in we're two in 20 to go <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how this all ends up but Sonia was one of the first and don't you guys know that like if you're an entrepreneur out there or you're doing a project or you're fundraising I mean it could be like you know gosh I don't know I used to sell girl guide cookies the first door that opened and said sure I'll buy a box doesn't that make you feel great you're like yes I'm on the right path yay <laughs> Even if it takes six more months for someone to buy your next box. So, Sonia, thank you so much for being industrious and adventurous and saying yes when you didn't really know what you were saying yes to. Now (laughs) she just found out, just like you guys did for the first time, there's going to be celebrities on her summit. What? Oh, my gosh. So exciting. But it is not about us today. It is not about us today. The reason why I said that you guys are going to be listening to someone who's quite industrious because she is in amongst yet another plot twist in her entrepreneurial journey, right? Taking some education. So Sonia, welcome to the Mission Accepted podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us, what made you decide to take this journey? So it's kind of a long story, but I was first introduced to network marketing when I was 19. Mm. Somebody came to my house. Um, They were actually introducing it to my parents, but I sat in on the meeting and I was fascinated by network marketing and what the the dream of it. And I was like, hey, I'm planning on going off to college. Maybe I could do this. So I joined up and then my parents were my supervisors and it was kind of funny, but I honestly had no idea what I was doing (laughs) and they didn't know (laughs) what they were doing either. So, and the people that they signed up were fairly new too. So we're all just kind of like, um, don't really know what's going on here. So I sold a few things, made a few bucks, um, did never really went anywhere. Um, then when I moved to Canada, um, and it was actually after I got married, I still use the products actually from the company that I joined in 1997. Wow. So cool. So cool. Right. (laughs) I'm like, I still feel like I'm in my twenties. I know. I'm just like, wait a minute. That was like 20 years ago. (laughs) That's impossible. So Um, I moved to Canada and I got married and then we were actually at my lawyer's office and the secretary there was with a company called Alouette 
And she called me later. She had some paperwork we needed to sign. And then she sort of said out of the blue, she goes, I never do this, but you just seem so cheerful and, and happy. And I would love to have you on my team. And I was like, um, uh, your team of what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then she told me about Alouettes and I was like, okay, interesting. A skincare that's based on aloe that, I mean, I know aloe is good. So anyway, I joined that company and I actually did really, really well um, to start with. And then uh, life happened and it just sort of petered off. I still use the products. <laughs> kind Fantastic. Of I love that theme. I love that theme. Yeah. Uh, and then I, so I still was in love with the dream of network marketing and I still knew that, you know, I could do great things with that. So I kind of jumped around from company to company for a while because I couldn't find one that I was 100% aligned with that felt 100% authentic to who I am. And not that they were bad companies. They were all wonderful, wonderful companies. And I had amazing teams. Um, I landed on one a couple of years ago and like all of a sudden I had 25 people under me, which was for me, that was unheard of because the highest I'd ever had before that was three. Mm -hmm. And, and these were people from all over the place. I had Sweden and Norway, the States, Canada, it was a global team. And then I ended up being allergic to the products. <laughs> oh, so those ones I'm not continuing with. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Um, but then that just kind of led me to the current company that I'm with now. And you know how I was saying I couldn't find something that was 100% authentic to who I am? Well, I found it. It's the tagline of this company is the, um, the mental wellness company. Mm -hmm. And that's what they stand for. They are, we, we want to help people with their mental wellness. Now we're not doctors, we don't prescribe anything but we can help people with taking care of their gut, which has new science out is showing that there is so much in connection between the gut, which is called the second brain and your first brain, which is your actual brain. Um, and then your heart is actually called your third brain. And so there's these axes. So they call it, there's the heart brain axis. There's the gut brain axis and there's the heart gut axis. And when one of those is off, you start feeling bad and you're, you start getting diseases and you just sometimes, sometimes it doesn't show up necessarily in a disease, but you just feel blah. Right. And that's where I was for so many years, just feeling blah. It's like my day-to-day -day life was not that exciting. I had a hard time getting up in the morning. I had a hard time staying motivated through the day. And now I'm excited to get up. I'm like, okay, what do we do next? Let's unpack that for a little bit. Cause there's a lot of great stuff there, right? <laughs> there's no, no, there's a lot of great stuff there. So when I hear your story, because a lot of times people will go into business, they'll open up their first bakery and then it doesn't do what they want it to do. And they'll be like, I'm done. And then that, and then they're done. Like they're done in their world of entrepreneurship. Or if someone joins like for you, it was multi-level marketing, network marketing, direct sales, home parties, whatever your gig is. And that they'll try it in one company and they'll say multi-level marketing doesn't work. Or, you know, uh, I'm not good at being an entrepreneur. So I'm not opening another baker. I'm just really good at baking, but I'm not good at business. And so there's a choice. Like you made a choice in there. You made a choice. You didn't say it didn't work. You're like, I love the product. I'm not grooving. Like it's not grooving for me right now for whatever reason. It didn't blow up for me right now for whatever reason, whatever, because there's so many elements to being an entrepreneur. That's why it's called mission accepted. It's like uh, you accept it. And then the party starts. I mean, the hard part saying, you know, the easy part saying yes, for most people like, oh, you know, I really, I thought about it and I wondered and I took the decision and I asked all these people and that's all cool. And they think the hardest part is saying yes. It's like, no, there's way more fun coming. <laughs> but but you, you had a number of companies and great, you know, products were for you. You stayed with the products, what have you. But then you found your rhythm. You found your rhythm. And most people, when they come into direct sales network marketing, I just happen to be a trainer in that sector and or in business, you know, their first business, your second business, your third business. I always say it's kind of like dating. Like, did you really marry the first person you dated? Like you never dated anybody else. You, you never took someone else to a movie. Like 
you nailed it the first time and for the rest of your life, that's great. That is like probably less than half of 1%. So if you have the courage to get back out there and date again, or go, you know, expand again, then it's the same thing in business that I'm listening to you. Like you really, you really gave it a go and you kept giving it a go until it worked for you. When that, you know, what, you know, kind of like, I was like, when the trifecta comes together. So your experience, you know, your knowledge, your willingness, your skills, I'm sure on your third company or your fourth company, you had better skills than you did when you were sitting around with your parents and they were like, okay, we tell you what to do at home. Now we're going to tell you what to do in this business, but we don't know what to do. (laughs) Right. I think that, you know, your experience now of the success that you're having was also accredited to your dedication of not giving up. I think that really, we that's, that's a stop and pause. And you've now found the product and the rhythm. And now you're, you know, now you're, in, now you're in love. Now you're having energy. Now you're feeling good, not only from the products that you're using, but it does feel good to know that it's something that's inspiring you to get up in the morning. I just wanted to unpack that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So here you are. You're, you're loving the deal. You've been doing this for a while. So what are some of the things that you do? You're talking, I know that you're, you were talking with us pre-show about, you know, you're expanding your knowledge base based on the experience you're having. So talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah. So the opportunity came up to get my certification, um, as a mental wellness coach. So I'm knee deep in that. (laughs) Um, and it's, it's fascinating. I mean, I knew some of the stuff I knew about like the gut brain axis and stuff like that, but just the scientific aspect of it and how much of our mental wellness can be attributed to our gut is just amazing. Like I was recently diagnosed with ADHD, um, Mm -hmm. as late as, uh, just a few months ago in November, uh, as well as fibromyalgia. But six years prior to that, I have had a huge problem with irritable um, bowel syndrome and leaky gut. And as I've been doing some research and learning about this stuff, it's like those can actually contribute to both ADHD and fibromyalgia. So it's just, it's just fascinating, this kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that anybody who has ADHD, just take these products and it'll be gone. I'm not saying that, but at the same time, I have noticed since I started taking it that my focus is better, my motivation is better, I'm more excited about getting up in the morning because I feel better. And my diarrhea that went from five, six times a day is now a couple of times a month at most. Yeah. So my quality of life has changed dramatically. And so I'm inspired by my own journey that there are other people out there who are having these same issues and I can help. I want to help. And that's why I'm taking this extra education so that I can, you know, learn about these things and be the best kind of help that I can be. And, and I think that, you know, again, that comes down to, I mean, when someone has a personal story or a personal experience and we know that, I mean, Sonia, we're sitting in amongst, you know, 375 pretty incredible women that have something that they need to share. And by nature, it's something that's inside them happened to someone that they know, you know, this happened to my husband, this happened to my daughter. I don't want this to happen to someone else. Um, I made my way all the way to be a TEDx speaker. And I want to tell women what to do or how to do it or whatever to, um, to be able to be that, to get that. And so when you have an experience of such, it just fuels you, right? Like when you get that wave of, of whatever it is, personal success, it's like you can ride that wave. And I think as someone who totally believes in health as well, we've had lots of those conversations. I mean, I what I'm hoping people hear is not only your happiness and your joy, because you can really hear that. You can hear that things have changed for you physically. So which means they changed emotionally and honestly, spiritually, like feeling more connected to yourself and other people um, is that it is an inside job. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an inside job, you know, whether we have a physical condition, emotional condition, what have you, it's being able to kind of look inside. And I think that diet, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in supplements and, and nutraceuticals and digging in a little deeper and just keep knocking on the door until you get your answer. Like 
you know, I don't know how many doors you knocked on, how many appointments you had with doctors or naturopaths or what have you. Lots. And yeah. And so you just keep knocking and keep asking, like, do you know, do you know, do you know? I mean, I know people that have, um, they're like, man, if I try one more product to try to get rid of my something, something, I'm like, oh, so you're just going to keep your something, something like you. So, you know, you again, until you, you, didn't, you didn't it. get the, you didn't get the right product the first time, you know, yes. you know, maybe what works for me for my, you know, headaches isn't working for you. So you're like, never going to ask anyone other than me. Like you have to keep going. This is a, you know, it's a vast world of information and a vast world of all sorts of things. So you just kept going. I mean, you're just a little per- perseverance bunny. I think that should be your speaking, you know, perseverance bunny. I think that's what we should call you, you know, <laughs> that you're, it's just, again, keep going and keep going and keep going. I want to ask you, cause you obviously have a lot of business experience because you've been in business and, you know, we all, we all love to hear some of those tips and things that people do to have higher success, right? You know what I mean? Other than kind of grinding it and having the experience, I call it top performance. Um, what do you do in your business um, to help optimize what you do? Is there a skill that's been helping you been successful, being able to um, have more people join your team or get out there in the media more? Like what are some of the things that you do to have business success? I think the biggest thing that I could say for somebody wanting to come into the business is just be yourself. You know, there's so many top leaders out there who says, oh, just do it this way, just do it that way. But if it doesn't speak to your soul, then it's not going to speak to the soul of the next person that you're talking to. But if it speaks to your soul and you can take that on and be like, yes, this is me. Then when you share it with somebody else, they see that, oh, this is really true to who Sonia is. I should listen. Even if it's somebody who doesn't even have never met me before, they can still feel that authenticity from me because I come from a place of authenticity. Um, in some of the companies that I joined, they told me literally everyone who breathes is your prospect. And I was like, yeah, but I don't want everybody who breathes in my team. Like mm-hmm. I'm kind of selective. So I had to go through quite a bit of interesting trainings um, with the three foot rule where, or the, whatever it was, where if you're three feet from somebody, they're your next prospect. And while I'm all for talking to people that I meet out and about, I'm not going to like, hey, how's it going? What do you do? Oh, well, let me tell you. And like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it would. <laughs> I'm much yeah. more about the relationships and building genuine relationships and not <laughs> dumping my my stuff down somebody's throat the moment I meet them. Right. So for you, your top performance is just really being authentic, um, building relationships, being selective. I think that's something that we all should hear in each industry. You know, it's like, um, well, you know, we're with the books and this the, this big project that I'm doing right now. You know, we're vetting, right, to make sure yeah. that everyone's in alliance and you know yeah. com- is coming from the same place and. Um, you know, every, every, every project, every company, every has, has, you know, criteria. And I think one of the beautiful things about being an entrepreneur that you get to choose who you play with, you get to choose who you work with. Now, sometimes in direct sales, it doesn't always work that way in relationship to who people bring in, people bring in, but you certainly can choose who you bring in, who your personal people are um, into your projects or into your business. And I think that's the, that's one of the freedoms that we don't monetize enough or highlight enough like you know if people have worked in offices where there's people there that you're like oh man that's just they're just not my party and that's okay if you don't have to work with them daily but you know one of the one of the freedoms that we get that we forget about sometimes being solopreneurs is that we really do have the freedom to talk to who we want to talk to 95 percent of every single day and what does that do for your mental health what does that do for your physical health right Yeah. yeah It's like, this is my sandbox and I can decide who gets to play in it. Right on. <laughs> I want to play in the sandbox. sandbox. You're out, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's great. That's a, that's a powerful top performance. And it's also, you know, for those haven't, that haven't heard it a million times, it's basically, you know, who you're hanging out with 
is going to make impression upon you, you know, energetically and fiscally. They say that you're the average income of the five people that you hang out with, right? So just we, because you hang out and you are that same mindset, it's really like the mindset starts to align. Your neurons start to kind of dance in that same party, which is why it's so uncomfortable when you want to go to that next level, because you need to stretch yourself to that next level and have different conversations and um, almost leave kind of a, that other part of yourself aside. Have you ever had that kind of experience where you're looking to achieve something and it doesn't feel comfortable or you say things to yourself like, I don't have time and I don't have money and I don't have, I don't have the skills for that. Have you ever gone through that? Oh, I, who hasn't, I can't <laughs> imagine anybody hasn't gone through that a number of times in their lives. Um, I was told my entire life that I was lazy and would just, if I didn't um, apply myself, I wouldn't get anywhere. Oh, this was at the same time as I got like the highest grades in the history of the college I attended. And, you know, um, I speak several languages and, and stuff. And I'm just like, wait a minute, what do you mean? I don't apply myself, but then come to find out I have ADHD and it's like, Oh my goodness, it all makes sense. It's just when I'm passionate with one thing, I kind of forget about all the other stuff. And mm -hmm. then I move on to something else and I become really passionate about that. And then, but I've, I've been learning how to kind of reel it all in and kind of pull it back and plan things better and schedule myself. I used to hate schedules. My mom, um, she's a mother of seven. She had to schedule us or things would be. Oh, glory, 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 <laughs> glory. <laughs> so I grew up in an extremely scheduled space. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I kind of rebelled against that mm -hmm. because it became a bit too much. And so mm -hmm. I kind of went the opposite and didn't want to schedule anything. Right. Well, that didn't really work either. <laughs> uh, you can't just go through life <laughs> floating on the next wind that's going by. So I had to um, learn some skills in, I had to learn to schedule, but still allow spaces. Um, I call them flex spaces where mm -hmm. if something goes too long or if I forgot about something or whatever that I can still add those in without it upsetting my whole schedule because my ADHD brain doesn't like that too much. Right. Well, working, you know, working with what is right. I, I think that we all have, I tell people I'm geographically challenged and if I wasn't geographically challenged, we wouldn't be doing eight marathons across Ireland. We'd be doing one. Right. <laughs> and so I'm um, sometimes Sometimes our specialness <laughs> gets us into situations where we le need to learn um, some coping or some different or, or what have you, but it also gives us allowance to being able to participate with other people that have their own, their own funky dance going on. Right. So, yep. um, and not letting it deter you, but letting, you know, it's just, that's this extra skill that you have to learn. Right. We all, we all have our stuff. We all have our stuff. So look, before we kind of wrap up, I'd love to see what is, what is it that you got going on? So you talked about this incredible company that's kind of changed things for you, right? And um, so I want you to be able to let people know where to reach you. Um, Cause I'm, I'm imagining that you're building a team internationally yeah. and that if people want to come and play and, and find out more about um, their health or what they can do about that, or maybe they have a question that you can refer them to somebody, or if they want to do some some side gig or full-time gig business with you, please tell us where we can find out um, more about you, honey. Sure. Um, now I don't have a proper website. Um, I do have a milkshake link, um, which of course I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> well, no, that's so can people find you on Facebook or Instagram? Oh, yes, What's your... absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. On Facebook and Instagram, I'm just Sonia Van Steed. Um, I have you a want to spell page. that? Sorry. Let's spell that for people. Cause oh, there can yeah, be all sorts of ways to spell all of that. <laughs> So Sonia with a Y, because everyone should have a Y, um, S-O-N-Y-A, and then my last name is Van Stee. There's a space between the Van and the Stee, so V-A-N space S-T-E-E. -E. And you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, I'm also on TikTok as the same name. And if you go there's not a lot of us out there. Okay, okay. And plus, we're going to have it in the show notes. It's just for people that right now that are are listening and they want to write it down and connect with you right away. They may have a health something, something. And so you are in the process of uh, not only are you doing a business, um, but you are so 
you are also educating yourself. And I talked a little bit about farm girl to health girl. Um, and so just tell us a little bit about your, you know, you spent when I, when we first started talking, you're like, oh, I gotta go. There's some, was there pigs or something you were doing? Like, you know, uh, what calves. Made, how many calves? Calves. Yeah. Calves. We have about, we have between 650 and 700 animals here on this property. Okay. So when I said farm girl, I wasn't kidding people. I wasn't kidding. You were like, <laughs> oh, farm girl. That's cool. I'm like, we can't end this interview without letting people know that there's more than three cats and a couple of dogs and a few little <laughs> things in a pen. So, um, so you didn't have a whole lot of time. And I know that you were, you know, that was a big deal for you. You were trying to learn how to run your business and, and have this extra farm girl responsibility at the same time that you were challenging, you were having challenges with your health. Yeah. And I actually did give up the physical part of working on the farm. Yep. Um, because of my fibromyalgia, I was really struggling to crawl in and out of the calf hutches to feed them. Yep. So, and um, <laughs> my coworker and I didn't necessarily get along the best either. <laughs> That's my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's going to be a whole series we could do on working with the fam. You know, I think, I think I'll talk to Dorothea about that. We're going to do like, a, we'll do a whole monthly series. I'm sure it'll be our, I'm sure it'll be our highest ratings. So <laughs> on mission accepted this month, we're going to talk about what it's like to work with the fam. The real goods do tell all. And people are going to dial in like, you know, it's entertainment tonight or something. <laughs> oh, I have, I have plenty of stories I can contribute. <laughs> all right. To the, roof, to the roof. Okay. And you are here to talk about it right? You're here to say you're through the other side of it and you are now rocking your business. Honey, we're so happy to have you on the 262 project. It's been such a pleasure to get to know you more. And we have just started with this party. So we've got some good time to go. Um, our, my last question to you, my last question to you is you're on your way to a desert Island and it's you and you, right? And you've got one suitcase. And in that suitcase, you've got room for one album what is the album that you could not imagine not listening to for the rest of your days? Oh, gosh. I have not even thought about that. That's because I just asked you. <laughs> it's not something that people normally think <laughs> no, about. But like, I don't actually, surprisingly, I teach music, but I don't actually listen to music a whole lot. <sighs> uh, All right. Give, me, give, give us a favorite song. Give us a favorite artist. Um. You know, I really like the sound of silence. Ooh, there's and, some great renditions of that. Oh yeah. Do you know do you know one that you like in particular? Sorry? The, is there is there an artist that sings that song that you like in particular? And to be honest, I don't know if I've run across one that I didn't like. Okay. Um the there's a a cappella group called Pentatonix that does a yes. beautiful rendition of it. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's what we're going to put down in your show notes. Thank okay. <laughs> okay. You guys look, if you want to be sitting where Sonia's and you want to get on the show and you've got something to say, we want to hear it. So here we go. this is not default. It's really easy. It's debdrummond.com. You can go to the website, debdrummond.com and you can see a whole array of incredible people that have podcasted and you can see an incredible array of magical moments um, YouTube has got all of the most incredible podcasts and as well, all of these magical musical moments. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this incredible event and we are looking, if you want to have anything to do with the event, if you want a business and you want to be associated to, they did a tour, this big musical journey for the next year and a half. And of us walking across and raising consciousness on how we need to support people that put out music that supports us big time in our mental health. I'm sure Sonia would agree with that then please go to theydidatour.ca. And if you are so inspired, just hit the donate page and we will be so grateful. And, or if you want to play in that project with us, reach out, same email, you know what to do. You guys are the best. Thank you for sharing the podcast. Thank you for continuing to subscribe. We're well, sure you had a few laughs with us today. Sonia, thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you on stage. I'm looking forward to it. All right, guys, stay groovy. Stay groovy, see you soon.